Welcome back everyone. Today we're talking truss analysis. So let's begin in the workbench as usual. Instead of creating a static structural object, I'd like to show you something a little bit different here. I'm going to create an independent geometry. So if you look down here, there's something called component systems. You may have to expand that out if it's minimized and pull out a geometry. Now creating a geometry gives you just the option for geometry. So we can double click on this and then create our truss geometry. Now in space claim, I'd like to make a two dimensional truss. I'll be sketching in the X, Y plane here. So let's sketch the X, Y plane right there and put this in plan view. Now for sake of this example, I'd like to use Imperial units. So I'll be using inches. So go to file space claim options, click on units and change this from metric to Imperial. We'll say, okay, if I sketch here a triangle and I go to three dimensional view, it will make a surface for that object which is not actually what we want to do. If we're making a truss, we want just the edges. Now this can work. You can just select the edges and assign them, for example, a truss cross section, but it's not that convenient. So let's delete that shape. I'll just select it, hit delete. And I want to create a new plane to draw in. So we'll go to design sketch mode. It wants me to select my drawing plane. So I'll select X, Y, and I'll go to plan view. If you want to create just line elements for this, Go over here to the left and click layout sketch. So if you have a layout sketch, it will not convert your lines to a surface and it will just retain the lines. So now let's start at the origin. For this truss, I'd like to go four feet or 48 inches over. And then I'll go four feet at a 60 degree angle. So 48 inches up at a 60 degree angle and I'll close that. And now I'll add on to my truss. So I'll continue drawing lines. I'll start at the top here and go 48 over and connect down. And I'm just gonna make this zigzag shape until I have about four bays, we'll say. So we'll just keep going with this 48 inches. And let's do one more here, 48 and close it. And that looks like a pretty good trust to analyze. So let's go to 3D view. And you'll see in 3D view that it has not converted this to a surface. I just have line bodies here. The rectangle is just my sketching plane, so it maintains that plane, which is fine. It's not actually gonna do anything there. So now let's assign a cross section to each of these lines. To do that, go up to the prepare tab and click on profiles. And you can see right now I have no profiles by default, but I can create new profiles of standard shapes or I can pull from a standard library of AISC or Euro code shapes. In this case, I'll make a tube, so circular tube. And on the left, you'll see my beam profiles are defined there. So I'll open up that folder and I see I have a circular tube. So if I right click on the circular tube and go to edit beam profile, here I can change the cross section dimensions. So you can see here's my outer radius, my inner radius, you can change them over here actually, which tends to be the most convenient. So if I click on this ruler dimension here, I can change that from our arbitrary 0.787 inches. Let's do a one inch outer radius. For my inner radius, let's create that as 0 0.875. When you're done editing your section, you can close it down here. So you'll notice there's several tabs that it opens one for each beam cross section and one for your standard drawing. So I could just close that beam cross section here. We don't need that anymore. So now that I have my beam section, let's assign that. So I'm going to select all of my elements here. Right now I have the circular tube selected and I'm going to hit create. You can tell it's created a beam section if it turns into a thick green line there. So these are all beam section elements. Now there's a couple tricks to make sure that this works properly when you're gonna go into ANSYS. So Let's next go to the workbench. And right here, there's an option called share and it shares coincident topology. So I'll click share and it will say that there are nodes here that can be shared. So in order to connect the beams correctly together, we do need to share our topology. So again, that's the share command under workbench. When you do that, be sure you hit this green check mark. Otherwise it's not actually going to complete your operation. And when you do that, then everything will turn this bright green. So you know that it's worked at that point. All right, and that's it for our geometry. So let's close down space claim. Back in the workbench, you'll notice that even though my truss is effectively two dimensions, 
my geometry is still actually in 3D. That's fine. If you change this to 2D, you'll get some possibly strange behavior of your trusses and beams. So we'll leave this in 3D and our boundary conditions will handle any weirdness that's going to go on because we have a third dimension. I'd like to link up an analysis to my geometry. So in order to do that, let's now create our static structural. And instead of just pulling it out here, I'm going to link it to this geometry. So I'm going to pull it on top of this geometry here. And you'll see that there's a line that links this geometry over to this analysis object. So this analysis object will use the geometry. The useful feature about this is if I want to do multiple types of analyses linked to the same geometry, it's very easy for me to do. Let's say I also want to link up a topology optimization. I can pull that over and both of these analyses will use the same geometry. Don't actually want that, so I'll delete that right now. And we'll just focus on this static structural one. So our engineering data, that's going to be our material properties. Let's again, just leave that as default. We'll cover that in a later video. Let's look at our model. Here in Ansys Mechanical, we can see the three dimensional truss here. I'm gonna click the Z to get the plan view in that direction. Now you notice my scale bar down here has my units of millimeters. That's not the same as my geometry that I defined in inches. So Space Claim and Ansys Mechanical will have independent unit systems and it's fine it actually works itself out it does all the conversions for you but for convenience let's put everything in terms of inches so to do that i'm going to go home and units and here i can set my ansys mechanical units i'll use us customary inches right there and now my scale bar is in inches and everything is going to be consistent with what i defined before so now that we've done that let's check our geometry I click on the geometry, I open that up. You will notice that we have a beam circular tube section. Everything's highlighted, so it's all part of the same geometry object. It all has the same cross section called the circular tube, which we defined before. And the model type for this is called a beam. That actually will work for our truss analysis, but for sake of this example, I'd like to convert that to a truss. So a truss can only carry axial forces, whereas a beam can carry axial shear and bending. So let's use a link truss. And my material assignment, structural steel, that should be fine. I can check my cross sections right here. You can actually edit your cross section at this point if you'd like to, or if you forgot to do it before. So our circular tube cross section has an outside radius, inside radius, which I can change those numbers here, but I'll leave those as what I previously defined. Now let's move on to the mesh. For the mesh, let's say I'm going to be naive about this and I'll just generate a default mesh. So go to the context menu, mesh, generate, and we'll see what it gives me. Notice that it has five elements per truss section right here. That's actually going to be a problem. So a truss element has to be defined from a connection to a connection as just a single element. Otherwise, there's e equilibrium is going to be impossible to satisfy right at that node. So in order to fix that, I'm going to change my sizing. And for the sizing, I'd like to select all my truss elements here. So I'll do a box select and I'll select edges. I'll just drag the box around everything. And I'll click geometry apply. And instead of using an element size, I'm going to use a number of divisions. And number of divisions of one will do one element per section of my truss. So now I can generate a new mesh now that I've defined that, let's move to our static structural analysis. I'd like to define a fixed support on this end right down here. Now you can only define supports or forces on the connections of trusses. So I'll select this node here, I'll apply. So I have a fixed, which effectively acts as a pin there. I want a roller support on this other side. To do a roller, we'll create displacement and I'll select again, this geometry right over here, apply. And I'll leave my X displacement free, my Y displacement all set to zero, and my Z displacement will be free. So that's effectively created a roller, so it's free to move in X and Z, which is out of the plane, but restrained in the Y direction. Lastly, remember that this is defined as a three-dimensional analysis, but I haven't defined a three-dimensional shape, and so this structure is actually going to be unstable in the out-of-plane Z direction. So in this direction here, we're going to have a problem. So I'd like to constrain all my displacement in that Z direction. So I'm gonna create another displacement condition. I'm going to drag a box around all of my nodes and I'll apply. 
and then I'll create zero displacement in the Z component, but leave X and Y free. So effectively, that makes this look like a 2D problem. Now that I have my boundary conditions, I'd like to create a load. So I'll create a force. I'll apply it to these three nodes here. Apply. And I'm going to define this as components. Zero in the X direction. In the Y direction, let's say it's negative 30 kips. So that's 30,000 pounds here. You'll notice it draws an arrow right there. It will distribute that load between all points that you've selected. So this is equivalent to doing 10 kips per location that I have here. And that's it, so let's run our analysis. Hit solve. You'll notice it gives you this warning. That is okay if I pull up that warning message right here. So for some reason, if you're using link or truss or cable elements, it always gives you this warning that you can't have multiple edges to a single um, body. This is the warning message that tells you you really shouldn't ha be having multiple elements per section of your truss. We satisfied that in this case, so we're actually okay. So I'm just gonna ignore that warning. All right, so let's now check out some results. So we'll go to solution. And I'll look first at deformation. We'll get a total deformation plot. And the next thing that I'd like is some beam results. Let's get the axial force from all of my beams here. And I'll hit solve. And here we can see this is the axial force. You can see it's highlighted based on the coloring here. So my axial force varies from about 20 kips in tension to about 23 kips in compression. Deformation is a little bit over a quarter of an inch. Sometimes it's nice to see the undeformed shape here. So if you click on this button right up here, you can also show the undeformed wireframe and it shows you where those points were originally. You can also change the display of your trusses if you go to display here. And right now it's presenting this as thick shells and beams. So if I turn that off, then it just makes them into lines like this. Sometimes this is easier to see, sometimes it's not. It depends on kind of what structure you have. So I'll leave it in this thick shells and beams section. Next thing I'd like to do is I'd like to check my reaction forces at my two sections there. So click solution, go to my context menu for solution. Reaction forces are a probe. So we can probe a force reaction and let's pick our fixed support right there. And then I'll also probe a force reaction at this displacement condition. Now the displacement condition, that was my roller over here. Displacement two was my out of plane displacement. So I can get a reaction for that, but it'd be a little bit unusual to see. So I'll solve that. And I can see just as I expected, I have a force reaction here of 15 kips up and a force reaction at the other side of also 15 kips up. Now let's go back to solution. And one thing that you notice that I can't create is a stress, stress object or strain. Now the reason that happened is because I did not do this option right here for, called beam section results. Right now it says no, so it's not actually going to get me beam section results. If you want stresses and strains, we'll have to turn this to yes. So if you turn that to yes, you'll have to hit solve again so that it gets those results for you. It'll give you that same warning, which is not a, technically a problem. And now I can define a stress object. Let's say I'll define my normal stress, because again, that's the only one that matters for a truss. Hit solve. And now you'll see I have my normal stresses. Obviously this looks very, very similar to your axiom force. The normal stress in this case, just being the axiom force divided by your cross section area. You can also probe this. So if I click on probe, I can see there's my results here. This can be useful for getting the actual values of an axial force. For example, I can see that's 17.3 kips and so on, clicking through the structure. And that's all for trust analysis for today. Please subscribe and I hope to see you next time.